Gorda. I'm Holly Teagle, and I'm the clinical director at the Hearing House. I've had the privilege of working with hearing experts and consumers over the last year to develop the living guidelines on cochlear implantation. They allow us to assess cochlear implant care provision, including the vital long-term care. This is a document that draws on state-of-the-art knowledge to develop clinical practice guidelines that can be used to increase cochlear implant uptake. The living guidelines are vitally important to ensure that adults who have or will have cochlear implants will have access to comprehensive lifelong support, including regular mapping, running repairs, and timely processor renewals. If people can't afford upkeep, this will lead to embarrassment to ask for help, not wearing the CI, worse still, isolation. Now I'm hoping that the living guidelines standard of care for cochlear implantation in adults will change the inequities in the public health care system when clients have bilateral hearing loss and can only be funded for one cochlear implant. I'm looking forward to the living guidelines giving us documentation to ensure more adults get referred to a cochlear implant program. The cochlear implant living guidelines will keep improving cochlear implant users' outcomes and care throughout the world. It'll be a wonderful tool to use. We really want all adults to get a great outcome and to reach their hearing potential. I have bilateral cochlear, cochlear implants. They have absolutely been life-changing. Since getting the cochlear implants, I have grown in so many ways and um, developed so much confidence. We know that cochlear implants can be transformative and adults and families out there need all the help they can get in order to adjust well. That's why I'm really pleased to hear that the living guidelines will include counselling and psychological support and recognises the importance of friends and family. I am a cochlear user for the last five years. I was fortunate at the time to have received public funding for my CI. I also feel it's important that public funding is extended to people to get the full benefit toward their hearing requirement. I also hope that it gives people bilateral implants because you need two ears to hear, just like you need two eyes to see. This is what people need. They need the ears and they need it fast. It is great that our clicker conversation could influence the recommendations of living guidelines. We need to make sure that the voice of young adults is included in our advocacy work. Because of my early diagnosis and my early decisions to have CI, I have really great results. And also I live in this between world of hearing and deaf. One of the biggest challenge I face being a deaf person who has cochlear implants is the fact that people don't trust me or don't believe me when I say I'm deaf. What would help is to let people know, bring knowledge and also spread the word about cochlear implants.